our second session of um, we come to the we come to the second session of our of our broadcast um, tonight. Uh, we are on a retreat with our God. God spoke to us at the beginning of this spiritual uh, retreat for healing and advancement. Um, shortly after 12 midnight uh, this morning uh, that he is going to do wonderful things through what we have embarked on. We have let go of everything in order uh, to allow God to to mentor us, to be our mentor, to be good to us. And so here we are. Um, let us pray, dear Holy Spirit, we call upon you. We call upon you. We ask for your divine presence and peace. We ask that peace be released to all who are listening to the sound of our voice. The sound of my voice at this time and let it carry with it divine program, divine energy. Let it carry with it life. I ask you to give advancement as you've already spoken. Let healing and advancement be poured out upon the earth. Thank you, Almighty Father, for there is none as good as you. We thank you, Jesus. You are so precious to us. We thank you for what you did on Golgotha for us. Your sacrifice is not in vain. Your deeds are not in vain. Your resurrection is not in vain. Therefore, we thank you. Excuse me. We thank you. We magnify your most holy name. We yield ourselves to you. We do not just trust you for everything. We believe in your supremacy, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue um, to talk about the gift of sensitivity. And today we are dealing with part seven of the gift of sensitivity. And I want to reach to you, I want to reach to you from First Samuel chapter 25 verse 28 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 28 and it says for Yahweh will certainly make my Lord a sure house for my Lord fights the battle of Yahweh. For my Lord fights the battle of God. God bless to us the reading from His most holy and sacred word. To His name be the praise and glory, but now and forever. Amen. Now let me tell you this story really quick. There was a man named Nabal. And let me begin by saying this. Always bring the presence of God. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to everything around you. 
be sensitive to what is happening around you. Because if you are not sensitive to what is happening around you, what is happening around you will become sensitive to you and may even lead to your destruction. The reason many of us have gone through times of defeat and failures and unnecessary stupid sickness afflicting us is because we've refused to be sensitive to our environment, sensitive to the lightness or the thickness of wherever we've been to. Our inability to conquer our environment through the omnipotent force of prayer, which is the omnipotent force of the Almighty God, has resulted, has resulted in the mediocre and mediocrity way of life that we've lived. Our ignorance and arrogancy in not studying the Word of God and knowing what the Word of God says about our rights and obligations in the person of Christ, in Him, with Him, through Him, by Him, has resulted in the enemy finding loopholes, finding plenty and plenty of lacunas to hit us time and over again. And it is about time that we should take the war to the camp of the enemy and not wait until war comes to us. You don't wait until events begin to unfold before you do something. Do something before events unfold. That's what Abigail did in this story. A man named Naomi married a woman named... Oh, sorry, please. Sorry, I am very, very sorry of what I've said. A man named Nabal, I am still talking about Naomi, I'm still in part six, you know. <laughs> I can't because I was just meditating on part six, what we did before this one. I, I was still meditating on it. Shortly before I came on air and began recording. A man named Nabal, I'm now on part seven. <laughs> A man named Nabal, his name means foolishness, idiot, stupid. Was married to a very beautiful woman. The quality that describes this woman is the gift of sensitivity. The gift of sensitivity that emanates from this woman called a big girl is what we call understanding. One of the best gifts you can ask God to give to you is the ability to be sensitive to things quickly. See into things. Present, past, future. The, the a targeted lifestyle the quickness to move swiftly and take care of stuff. I mean, in a situation that you have everything that are capable to make it happen for you. This lady has the gift of sensitivity. Some women, some men, many, yes, do not have it. The Bible says that this man was so wealthy. And you know in those days, for you to be wealthy, 
means that you must have a lot of flock, a lot of animals, sheep, goat, donkeys, camels, kind of stuff. Well, his servants, his shepherds, normally take these animals and go to where there was water and pastures. And um, his shepherds came under the custodian of David and his men in the wilderness of Carmel. And David and his men took care of them. They were like a wall to them, according to these young men, when they, when they were talking about the kindness of David to Abigail. Well, when they came back from Carmel with the animals, nothing was missing. They were well taken care of by David's men and David himself. So when David heard, when it was reported to him that Nabal, this rich man, has declared a feast, like an end of year bonuses and party, so he sent his young men, go to him, greet him in my name, greet him in the name of David, and said, David sent greetings, say peace be to you and to your household, Peace be on all that you do. Blaze the be you. And please, when your young men were here with your animals, we did give you guys protection. We promoted the welfare of your business, sir. Even if you didn't know us, we did it for you. So if we have found favor in your side, do give this young man whatever your hand, whatever you can, you can give to us. We have come at a good day at an appointed feast. And the man said this, a lot of servants are breaking away from their masters. Who is David, the son of Jesse? I know him now. There was no one in the land of Israel who did not hear of David, the son of Jesse, who killed, who slayed Goliath. And Nabal, from the, the family of the Caleb's, completely made light of David. He inflicted emotional injury on David. He inflicted an all insult on the person of the future king of Israel. His young men left, came and told David. And David said, I do not stand another man hurling insult on me, especially when I did good to him, he's now paying me with evil. We should expect when we do good things to be paid back in kindness. The Bible says, if someone does something good for you and you pay that person back with evil evil will never 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 depart from your house think about that the bible says so not me so those of you who are very jealous and, and envious of other people's progress take care of this word when people have been kind to you good to you do not repay them with evil the reason is this, if you repay kindness with evil, evil will never leave you. It will come after you in one way or the other. That's what the word of the living God says. You hear me? Okay. So there is no place for you to try to do bad to people. Because bad will be declared against you. Well, the servants of this man hate the dishonor thrown at David, the son of Jesse. And they went to their mistress. They went 
to their madam who was actually in charge of the house they went to abigail a woman who has the gift of sensitivity and she listened attentively see the difference between him and the husband the husband was a foolish man treating people as though people are nothing doesn't that sound like our modern day businesses and corporate world where people are treated like a nickel and a dime and replaced so easily tell me about it because i've played my role in giving my best to those corporations and get nothing And yet when I responded to the kindness of God in what he ordains and destined me for and I agree with him, I have made more money just by making the right decision with God than walking my life off for people who are not worth the effort. They are not worth it. Some corporate America is not worth it. Some corporations around the world are not worth for you to work for them. Because if it was possible, they would take you captive and you'll work for them at nothing. Thank God the end of the slavery days is gone. Abigail listened. The husband did not listen. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? The husband did not listen. Listening is a sign of sensitivity. Asking question is a sign of sensitivity. Nabal did not even call his shepherd, his servant, and said, Is what this man from David saying true? Is it true? And if it is true, why did you not tell me all along? Nabal did not even ask questions. People who don't ask questions are actually digging their grave. That's why there are things that you want to do. You have to ask the appropriate quarter, the professionals in that field. And some of the disappointment I have, I have, I have seen in my lifetime is when you go to those professionals to consult them, they don't even have an answer for you because many of them don't even know and i asked how did they pass their exam to become this and that and abigail a woman filled with the gift of sensitivity expressing itself as understanding in her life she jumped she jumped because she knew she saw, she heard, and she put it together and knew exactly what is about to happen. When the servant finished talking to Abigail, they told her, evil has been determined against our master. He's such a worthless fellow that no one can even speak to him. Read, read the entire First Samuel chapter 25, you will see. The Bible is the book of human psychology. There is no psychology book that is better than the Word of God. None. And there is no kingdom that is better than the kingdom of our God and our Lord and our King. Thank you, Jesus, for your kingdom. Abigail, Abigail immediately dressed five sheep Figs of cakes, raisins, clusters of raisins, bread, wine, loaded it on a donkey and asked the servant to move, to take it and go, she's coming. She also got her donkey and, and went. And on a pass between the mountains, there were David and his men coming. And she knelt before David and this is what she said she called David 
you will see that word repeating itself over and over and over again in 1 Samuel chapter 25. She opened her mouth. How you know a dependable, responsible, an honorable fellow will always emit, always bust out with the emotion of honor towards another person. She busted out with emotion of honor. Bow and held his feet. David's feet. And she began to do something that very few women they do. This is a married woman. Married to a wealthy man. And yet she did not allow that wealth to enter into her head. She did not become proud and arrogant because of the wealth she was married into or she was managing. She said to David, God has stopped you from blood guiltiness. If I have found favor in your sight, please don't avenge yourself. Let Yahweh avenge for you. And Yahweh did. Yep. She was able to say that the husband did wrong. How many of you women out there are able to say and do what a big girl do? Some of you will accuse the man, but you will not speak into David. You will not bless David. Neither will you give him anything. But Abigail was the whole package of what a man need. She's one of my greatest heroes in the world. It's Abigail. Abigail, the wife of David. She was the whole package, the entire package of what a woman is supposed to be is found in someone like Abigail. And she said, and she said, when things become well with you, David, because I know certainly that Yahweh, God Almighty, the God of Israel, is going to make you a sure house. I know it. I can feel it. I can smell it. I can sense it. For you are fighting the battle of the Lord. How many women out there how many of you women out there are able to know that your husband, what he is doing, he is in a battle and that he is fighting the battle of the Lord to keep you and the kids surviving and going? I have been in a situation that I have seen women who their husband struggles and work hard to keep her and the kids to make them make it in life and be fulfilled, yet they took it for granted. When you take things for granted, that's when the punishment of God will come on you. That's when the glory will be lifted. And you'll be left alone to struggle on your own. And somewhere along the line, those people that you depend on to help you, the Almighty will remove them from you. Then your suffering will begin. Even the devil that deceived you will leave you. A time will come that those people whom you are depending on will flee from you. And you will not see people to spend your days chatting on the telephone. You won't see them. They will not be there. And you will ring them. They will not respond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason is because the Lord brought increase and good to you. And you treated them as nothing. In the presence of David, 
Abigail began not to see a weakness. He began to see strength. Not many people are interested in the strength and giftedness of other people. I am. I rejoice at your strength and not your weakness. Abigail began to speak into the king in him. Abigail saw the king in him. In spite of him fleeing from the palace, becoming a hoodlum, becoming like a Robin Hood or whatever we call it, becoming homeless because of one non-entity king called Saul, a buffoon of a king, chasing the real king away. Abigail began to speak into David, began to bless him, began to speak promotion, protection, provisions, and began to call the potentate in him out into the open. And David blessed Abigail too. The rest is story because along the way, Nabal the foolish man did die and David took Abigail one of the wisest women David ever married was Abigail never seen any I've never come across any woman like Abigail never never in my lifetime I've never so sensitive and she knew that her future was tied down with this nobody called David. She saw the throne in that man. What do you see in your man? What do you see in your husband? Do you see him on the throne? Do you see him on the throne? with their crown on his head? Or are you busy putting him down, pulling him down, so as to promote yourself and your own family that you left to marry him, so as to take from him to give to them? Is that all you're seeing? And you think Yahweh, the God of Israel, is not seeing it? Because we play this game. We bring God into it as though God is our equal. But the days of judgment are coming. You must become sensitive to the people that you see. Excuse me. You must. I pray that the Almighty God will begin to make us to begin to pour into us his gift of sensitivity so that when we see strength we know what it is God is calling us to become hunters for dreamers for rulers for achievers we are to make people build businesses. But let me conclude by saying this. Except you have the spirit of meekness. When a talented person comes your way, you will not be able to know it. It takes a listening person it takes a sensitive person to be able to know what is going on, the event that is unfolding. If Abigail did not make that move, David would have wiped out that man's family. Who knows what would have become of her? 
she would have lost on both sides. But she make her move quickly. What moves are you making? Who are you investing good words to? To motivate, to become what God has called them to be. Instead of putting people down. Your job should be to build people with good words and empower people so that they can become great. If there was anything I enjoy about my father, Agui Mary, it was the way he built other people, the way he set up other people so that they prospered, so that things went well with them. My father didn't leave to enjoy the fruit of his labor. But I asked God to give to me because my father did so into the treasure house. So I'm entitled to receive it. Yes, I am. You are entitled. If your father and mom did great things before they passed into glory, you have the right to call on the treasure house to release for you. Yahweh will build a sure house. Certainly, certainly. She was so sure of it. That God will certainly build a sure house. That is an everlasting house for David. She looked at her own house and knew that her future is not with this man. I don't believe in divorce. I believe in dissolving. Marriages that does not work, that is not worth it. Foolish marriages, stupid marriages should be dissolved. So that you can enter into happy marriages. A joyful marriage. A godly marriage. It will ask God, what stopped me from having a wife who is a prayer warrior? Who will pray and prevail on one thing until the answer comes? Yeah. There's so many things that is involved in marriage. And in raising kids. But the most important thing is ability, being sensitive to speaking into other people's lives so that they become greater than stars. We ask this in the name of God, the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me begin to minister to you. We speak boldly and call on the blood of Jesus, 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 blood of Jesus. Let the power and the efficacy in the name and in the blood of Jesus be released be released into the four corners of the universe into the homes houses offices into the lives of people watching right now and crying out for justice for mercy for grace from god for favor let organs and tissues be released so if you are watching, you can touch my hands. You can touch my hand. And let God begin to minister to you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. I am healing people right now, says the Lord. People are getting healed of all manners of sickness. For those who come to me will be saved and will be healed. For my son paid with his blood, with his very life, so that you may have life and have it abundantly. Therefore receive his life. Receive the fullness of his life. 
My son's death is not in vain. Therefore, receive his life in you. Hallelujah. Father, we receive it. We boldly receive it. In Jesus' mighty name. I touch you with my hand and I speak healing into your life. I speak prosperity into your life. I decree and declare that the presence of God is flowing into your life. And for those of you who are weak in body, you are receiving new energy. You are receiving new omnipotent energy from God. Your healing is assured. And certainly, for those of you who have been praying for God to bless you so that you can begin to build houses, buy a car, raise a family, the Almighty is making that possible right now. Father, thank you for the warmth. If you feel a warm, if you feel like a hot sensation or a warm sensation in your belly, put your hand in your belly. For healing is happening to somebody's belly. Somebody's belly is being healed. Hallelujah. Somebody's ear is being healed. Someone's ear is opening. And those of you who have infection in your ears, they are being healed. Somebody's right hand is being restored. It's being restored right now. It's being restored. Someone broke the left leg. The Almighty is fixing your bone right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is miracle of supernatural giving of teeth. Teeth are being adjusted and made better. I don't know how, but that is what I'm told that is happening. Somebody's eyes is being corrected. The retina, the macula, they are being fixed now. For this is God's will for his people. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone's back and chest is being made perfect. It's been reshaped, reworked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is someone who is watching me who is watching what is happening. You've been asking God to release a certain amount of money into your life. I release that money that you are looking for into your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we adore you for what you're doing tonight. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for restoring sight to the blind. Thank you for making the dumb to speak. There is someone whose tongue is like sticky at the end. So you cannot talk very well. And someone is asking you to watch my videos. To watch this broadcast. I command your tongue to lose i command you to speak in the name of jesus christ of nazareth speak amen amen thank you jesus amen i will see you by six o'clock this morning and we will conclude the night session our night retreat, spiritual retreat for healing and advancement. Amen. Praise God. And this is Reverend Dr. Idika 
Ago Imeri, your bishop. Amen.